Yo, what's good everybody? This is Sean from Colossal. Just want to thank y'all for tuning in today. Uh, these are going to be the visuals for our latest album review of Kid Cudi's Man on the Moon 3, The Chosen. Uh, this is off of our latest Colossal podcast, uh, episode 4, where we review the Kid Cudi album, Jack Harlow's album, and a lot more music, as well as, you know, debating who's up next for 2021, and a whole lot more. Uh, you can check out the full link for that podcast down below on Spotify. Uh, also, make sure to give us a uh, subscribe down below. Give us a like, comment, if there's anything you'd like us to hear, any questions about our, uh, about our takes along this video. Um, also make sure to follow us on all social medias at Colossal Music on Twitter and at Colossal Music Group on Instagram. Uh, but without further ado, hope you enjoy the video and let's get to it. Peace. Let's get started. Should we start with the uh, the Kid Cudi review, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get into it. So um, I guess we'll start off by, uh, for those that don't know, you know, this is obviously the third and final edition of his Men on the Moon uh, series the first of which, Man on the Moon 1, that came out in 2009. Uh, legendary album. Changed the hip-hop mm. scene forever. Mm. Um, one of the first introspective albums that came out in hip-hop uh, really opened people's minds to the idea of rappers talking about depression and, and, and anxiety and, and personal issues like that. He followed that up with Man on the Moon 2, came out in 2010. Um, and this is the final edition of that. Ten years later, um, after a host of different projects where Cuddy has taken his, taken his sound into a bunch of different genres and areas, he's experimented, and he's closing out this chapter, returning to a more original Cuddy sound, we shall say, but with a, um, a little bit of a, a modern influence. So I guess we'll just open it up from here. Um, I want to know what you guys think about the new project. Um, whoever wants to start off, let's hear it. I can go. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I thought it was all right, um, to be honest. Um, if I'm giving it an official rating, I'd probably say six or seven out of ten. Um, it really wasn't, wasn't something I was looking forward to hear front to back. Um, it wasn't bad. Um, you know, there was a couple good songs. The one song that I was really looking for, my, probably my favorite track from the album that I was definitely looking forward to hearing was the song he did with Pop Smoke and Skepta, um, mm. which, hold on, I'm trying to give the name of that uh, show out, mm -hmm. which for me kind of, it was, I mean, it's obviously Kid Cudi, who's a great musician with Pop Smoke and Skepta, um, who I'm big fans of and who on a position like this over a drill beat, they're not going to miss. Um, but I feel like this was kind of the drill version of, all right, you get like, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm, when I was thinking about it, I thought of it as like a smoking session, like Kid Cudi rapping on a drill beat is kind of like what I imagined smoking with my dad to be like, where it would be <laughs> like, like something that's fun and interesting. But what I want to have see it again not really like mm -hmm. what i is it imaginable not really was i like it was it good yeah like it, but it wasn't it was it was something new but it was something that i i mean i really don't want to have any want to see kid cuddy rap on any drill beats again i mean i didn't even know like if i like though how he was able to some songs were felt like he was on some drilled shit some other songs he was on some like country music sh music shit but the flow of the album went really well which i liked um but i mean it's kind of like you can't really top i guess the first man on the moon which mm -hmm. which that kind of style of depression and anxiety and kind of talking about that stuff and i felt like it was sort of overplayed stretched out um but it was good. It was a good album overall. But yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I think Kalen, bring, you bring up some really good points. I think um, definitely the first half of the album sounded more more trappy. You know, um, I thought there was a heavy Travis Scott influence. I think they influenced each other, so I think there was a heavy influence there, especially on uh, the track. Let me find it again. She knows this. 
huge, mm. huge rodeo vibes on that one. And then um, the second half, I think, was a little bit more old school Cuddy um, with uh, some tracks such as uh, Solo Dola Part 2, Sad People, um, For the Kids, The Pale Moonlight. It was a little bit more uh, Man on the Moon-ish, if you will, like the original the original, uh, the original sound that, that brought Cuddy into the game. So I guess, Sean, maybe you want to expand on that, your thoughts on the album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I totally agree with you, Kalen, on, on Show Out. Like, I feel like Pop Smoke hit that like crazy. It was good to hear his voice on a good drill beat again. I think Skepta held his own on a drill beat as well. Like, he, he is a British rapper, but I, I don't, like, see him as top tier in the drill scene in the UK. Oh, sure. But he still held his own on a drill beat. And then when Kid Cudi's verse came around, it was just like, yeah, you, you don't really fit here. Like, I, I respect you trying it, but, you know, this just, I don't know, it feels wrong. Like, your your analogy of, of smoking with your dad, like, yeah, this is cool, yeah. but I don't want to do this again. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, nah, I totally agree with that. Um, but no, nah, some of my favorite tracks from it, uh, I really like Tequila Shots, the first real track on the album. Um, I've been bumping that a lot. Um and then towards the end, yeah, I, I agree with you, Alex, of how it sort of it got a little bit more introspective towards the end and a little bit more reminiscent of earlier Man on the Moon projects, which I, I liked. But uh, at the same time, I feel like there wasn't necessarily enough originality in it. Um, I liked the sound and I liked the flow of the album a lot. But at the same time, I, I feel like I was expecting... I was expecting something different from this and I was expecting Cuddy to expand his sound a bit when in reality, I feel like he was only just kind of changing his sound to match what the modern day music marketplace wants, mm -hmm. which is where it sort of ties into that Travis Scott sound in the beginning of, you know, having that sort of dark voice in the background. That's sort of that introspective voice in his own head, like mm -hmm. very reminiscent of old Rodeo projects. Like I, I don't want to say that, that Travis Scott, sort of influenced Cuddy to make an album like this, but I feel like Travis Scott's sound, which is one of the most popular sounds in the industry right now, mm -hmm. influenced Cuddy to make an album that was also reminiscent of that sound, yeah. um, which I can respect, you know, it's, it's him adjusting to the times, but at the same time, I was hoping for a little bit more originality out of it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, Sonically, in terms of the production and everything, uh, Cuddy doesn't really seem to have lost a step. I mean, his the production mm -hmm. I think is pretty good throughout the project. Actually, pretty fantastic on a lot of the tracks. Amazing. But um, but I agree with you, Sean. I think uh, there's some moments where maybe he tries too hard to 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 sort of form his sound to conform with the modern uh, hip hop sound, especially early in the album, and maybe that does dock some points from the album. If you had to give it a rating out of 10, like, uh, like Kalen did. Kalen, you give it a six to seven range. Well, where would you put it, Sean? I would, I would go a little bit higher than that. For me, it would be around like a, probably a seven, 7.5. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I could call an eight because I would have to like actually want to listen to the whole album through over and over again. But I, I, I still enjoyed it. I still like the sound. It's still like, it's still uniquely cutty. Like there's not many artists out there that are going to have a sound like that and have mm -hmm. production like that as well. So mm -hmm. I can totally respect that. But yeah, like I said, I think I was expecting something a little bit different. So yeah, seven, 7.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Noah, how about you? What, uh, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the Cuddy album? Yeah, so what all, all of you guys have been saying has been, has been really you know, on point. Um, I like what you said, Sean, about him not really being able to find his sound here. Because uh, I feel like he's kind of marooned between his old sound and the sound that he'll eventually reach. And as you said, Alex, Travis Scott influence is definitely coming in with that. And Kalen, yeah, you're totally right about the show out. When I think of that song, I don't remember Cuddy's verse at all. I just think of mm -hmm. Skepta and Pop Smokes. Um, so, yeah. I, but overall, I would say that he did deliver in this album because just think about how hard it is to follow up Man on the Moon 1 and then Man on the Moon 2, especially mm -hmm. 10 years afterwards. There's no way that he could put anything out and then people would be satisfied with, with the product that he did put out. 
So in that regard, I think he delivered. I do, I do, going back to what I said earlier, I think he's marooned between his sounds that he's going to attain in his old sound. But if you go back and listen to Man on the Moon 1, there's, the, the sound is very dated for that time. And we, we talked about Tiny Tempa's discovery. Same, same kind of victim to that same situation where these, this was the sound of the time that was playing on the radio and it yeah. just didn't stick around for long at all. Mm-hmm. And that kind of was, he was a huge victim of that as well. Yeah. And going to the actual songs, I, uh, I enjoyed definitely the first half of the album much more. Now say so probably my my favorite is obviously sad people, so we were texting about that the, t- the day it came out. It was just classic Cuddy, nothing yep. nothing else. It was just textbook. Is the moons and in, in this and the harmonies they all meld together, and then the the eight oh eights come in. And it's a it's a great layering. It's just a very good experience. Completely sober, I get goosebumps listening to that song. So this song made it worth worth it for, worthwhile for me. Mm-hmm. took me back to listening to you know a kid named Cuddy as a young boy and that's kind of all I was looking for I, I don't listen to Kid Cuddy a lot but he was one of the first rappers that I really delved into just because you know kid, kid, kid named Cuddy was free on as a as a young boy and then yeah. a couple of those songs made it onto to Man on the Moon 1 which also speaks a lot about how the sound has definitely completely changed and just the overall scope of what people are listening to today because a lot of those songs you know would not get played today if they weren't yeah. classics so overall i would say i'll probably go in between you and you and kale and sean i would say it's you know like a seven mm. like it, it it like it it delivered but it wasn't something yeah. that i'll be going back to again and again but sad people i'll be listening to over and over yeah sure. yeah I think if I had to give it a rating, I would be in a similar range. I'd probably be, Kale and I'd be similar. I think in your range, I'd be around a 6.5 range. Um, I, I think, funny enough, the, the fact that the production is so good holds it back a little bit for me because I think with that level of production, he could have done a lot more. Mm. Um, and, I, you know, I think there's some tracks on here that are a little bit – I don't want to say – they weren't needed because every Cuddy song conveyed a message, but um, they're just a bunch of songs that I personally won't be going back and listening to. But um, Sean, I'm just, I agree with you. Tequila Shots is my favorite song. I've been listening to that one a lot, actually. Um, that one gets me, it gets me quite emotional, actually. Some of the stuff he mm-hmm. talks about, his relationship with his mom and, and everything that was very tough. His diet, dad died, I believe, when he was 11, I want to say. So he kind of talks about that on the album as well. Um, this is actually a sorry to interrupt. This is a quick anecdote on tequila shots that I'm seeing now. Um, so this is, this is a quote from David Byro, who is one half of Take a Day Trip, um, yeah. and he was talking about you know when they were making the album and specifically when they made tequila shots. And he said the day we made tequila shots was the first time the four of us, so Take a Day Trip, um, Cuddy, and then one other, I think it was Dot. Um, it has to be first time the four of them had been together after the Scots went number one Mm. and he said we literally took tequila shots that day just celebrating it the whole day and then right (laughs) after that they made the song and turned it into a hit so that's (laughs) I just fuck with that anecdote right when right when the Scots went number one they're like all right yo back in and make it some music let's get it done (laughs) because I I didn't I didn't know that and at first when I saw that shit I was like I'm really like quarantined up at the crib, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to listen to the song called Tequila Shots right now. <laughs> and despite it being like a good emotional song, like you were saying, like, I just feel like Tequila Shots, like, that's the name of the song. Like, it felt almost like a little too corny right now. The name didn't really make, now it makes sense. I, I've, been, I've been asking myself that question too, yeah. about why the name is what it is. Yeah. I guess if, if we're delving into the album a little bit, um, just quickly, uh, I kind of want to kind of see how you guys feel about this. The fact that there's only four features on the entire album, um, mm-hmm. Skepta and Pop Smoke are on Show Out, as we said, which was a hit and miss kind of track. Um, Phoebe Bridgers is on the album on Love and Me and uh, Trippy Red on Rockstar Nights. But other than that, no features, 18 tracks, only four features, 
three songs with features that's at least 15 tracks that are just Cuddy himself. Um, I guess personally, that kind of made the album, it kind of elongated it, kind of made it drag a little bit personally. I, I am someone who does enjoy a good feature. Me too. Um, and I'm surprised that there weren't any other features. I'm surprised we didn't maybe see a Kanye. I'm really surprised we didn't see a Travis Scott, you know, anyone like that, people that Cuddy works really closely with. So I kind of want to get your guys' feelings and thoughts on that. How do you guys feel about the lack of features? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Or, you know, how do you guys feel? I guess we'll start with Kalen. Yeah, um, definitely it needed a Kanye feature. I think for the most, like, the Pop Smoke Skepta, like, I think that feature really got a lot of attention on the album and people were like, oh, shit, like, even it's like Pop Smoke, Skepta, Cuddy, all these kind of great talented musicians and you're not getting a lot of pop smoke features i think this was um probably if not the first like one of the first big um commercial pop smoke features from um like posthumanist features on a non-new york artist's project mm -hmm. like i know he's done stuff where like lil tj like um or his estate has given out features to lil tj um french montana jay guapo yeah. But um, this like the first. This is one of the first where um, times where I'm like, oh, it's it's like from a non New York artist, Skepta. Really bring it. That's the kind of that Skepta Pop Smoke um, collab, which is like rarely seen, but it's out there. And every time, in my personal opinion, the Welcome to the Party remix along there's an it's phenomenal, the unreleased, um, ridiculous, Rocky Skepta Pop Smoke song, which is out there. Which my opinion. A lot better than the Cuddy one, um, but I and I and kind of Pop Smoke being the kind of the first big face of the New York drill scene, rapping on British beat like British style uh, rap style beats. Um, and so I really like that. I think the Trippy Red. I'm not a big Trippy Red fan. I think he's kind of corny, but I did think that the Cuddy Trippy flow. I I did kind of respect it, and I did think mm. just like despite me like having no interest in a Kid Cudi Trippy Red song at all. Like, I think the flow went really well, but I think a Kid See Ghost track was needed. Yeah. Um, was a Travis Scott track needed? I don't know. Like, I'm kind of interested why he, did, like, why he didn't have a Travis Scott feature. Like, yeah. I'm kind of curious to the fact because they released that single, they're saying, oh, we're going to drop a project. And, you know, Travis Scott has been, has his new PlayStation, Jordan, McDonald stuff all coming out. Like he's doing a lot of promotion, yeah. um, but hasn't released that much music. Um, so I was surprised about that. But I really it, it needed a lot of features. Um, mm -hmm. I think it needed a lot of like I think all the features went well. I just yeah. think he needed more of them, um, and that the album is going to have two non-feature songs that stand out, and the rest are kind of just going to go under the under yeah. the the radar kind of i think I, yeah i agree i think if you're not a cuddy fan you're probably not going to go back and listen to a lot of the tracks on this album mm -hmm. um noah how about you did you think there should have been more features and if so who would you have liked to see on this project i think he could stand alone uh if you i just looked back at man on the moon one features and there were six Rat -tat, those, right yeah, and then on the well, on the extended, there's more, but yeah, Ratatat was on with MGMT for Pursuit of Happiness, right? And then Maker Say was with Kanye and Common, which is an incredible duo, right? That's an only Midwest track. And then Billy Craven was on My World, Ratatat was on Alive as well, and then Chip the Rapper was on Here, mm -hmm. if that's how you say it. I never listened to that song, so but. Going back to a kid named Cuddy, he had a total of, I think, yeah, so three. Chip the Rapper, um, Wale, so he only had two. Yeah. And so yeah. he has a lot of tracks where he stands alone. So The Prayer, which is obviously a sample, mm -hmm. um, he still stands out by himself. Day and Night, Maui Wowie. Pillow Talk's like a, a deeper song. Like, I don't really, wouldn't li listen to that on an average day, but it's still, you know, work of art. I used to listen to this mixtape through and through over and over. Yeah. Uh, so, Cuddy Spazin, great song. Cleveland is the Reason. Probably one of my favorite Kid Cuddy songs ever. 
mm. and very underrated song. And it's not like I like Cleveland at all, but it's a great, it's a great song. It, it was something that you would never listen to unless yeah. you were listening through this, this album because it's just a gem and then heaven at night. So given that a lot of those songs were just deeper, just on, on the face of it, let's count off all the, the hits that we were standing alone. So the prayer, Day and night, Maui Waui, and then heaven at night. So that's four on the first one where you stood alone. And those are four tracks that stand out, you know, years later. So I think yeah. that given that there was only four features, they could have done more. But I think that overall, I th he, he was able to do enough. Yeah. You have, as Kalen said, have two songs that were just him standing alone to be mm -hmm. propped up and a couple other ones just to fly under the radar. So yeah. I think that's a, a fair assessment. Two songs that he doesn't have anybody featuring will become semi hits, and then maybe one of these songs with a feature, maybe Show Out will be a hit too. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And I saw just going back to. to you know, his pursuit to get a number one album. I saw on Hypebeast that this is set to, or predicted to be at number two debut. So we'll yeah. see if he gets to number one. Behind Taylor Swift, right, I believe. Maybe, yeah. I, I might be behind her. Obviously she did that surprise thing for her birthday and then everybody on Twitter was mad about it. Last so, I checked, last I checked- Taylor Swift. Track. Yeah, last I checked Taylor Swift, her album was number one and the censored version of her album was number three. So she's oh. one and three right now. The same album. The clean version. The clean version, yeah. I mean, wow. that's her audience. I mean, she's yeah. She's. I, I don't know if you guys have listened to the Taylor Swift project, but I'm I'm not gonna listen. It was. I listened to some of it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, but so um, yeah. So Noah, you're you're pretty happy with the uh the features on this. Um. I guess, Sean, how about you? How do you feel about, uh, about the feature list on this, on this project, the short feature list? Yeah, so I, I, th I think I agree with, with both Kalen and Noah mm -hmm. in that I think Cuddy's, Cuddy's sound back in you know, the early 2010s, that was something that I could listen to a lot. And I could listen to just him in a song, like day and night, I could listen to that any day of the week. Right. And I love it. But his sound now, I feel like is complimented when another sound is included in a song with him yeah that's why like i i enjoyed the scots so much was because it had both travis's sound and cuddy's sound in the same song and i mm -hmm. feel like getting a break from each really complemented each other and so for that reason i feel like on this project specifically not necessarily on past projects i think cuddy's voice could totally stand alone back in you know man in the moon one and two mm -hmm. but i think with this one he definitely could have benefited from a few more features um into a travis scott feature i don't i honestly don't know whether whether that would have been been what i wanted for this project or not mm -hmm. um i say that because i feel like them doing the scots together was a big influence on how man on the moon 3 actually ended up sounding as a whole yeah. Yeah, I feel like when they made that together, it influenced both of them to shift in a way that they really yeah. thought of shifting before. And so, I, I yeah, I I think I think the influence that Travis had on him with the Scots was enough to make Man on the Moon three a little bit more you know conform to the modern sound. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I I would say I'm I would say I'm in between. I could definitely use a few more features, but. I do still think that Cuddy, Cuddy was able to hold his own on a few of the songs. So, yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you, Sean. I, I, I would have enjoyed a couple more features, but other than maybe Kanye, and even so, like 2020 Kanye, I'm not sure I would have liked them. Um, right. I can't really, I can't really think of anyone else really that would fit this project because it is, a, it is a storytelling project at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I was trying to think of who I would put on here, but I can't yeah. think of like a specific name that that I think would really hit with Cuddy. Yeah, oh, so MGMT, like, again. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, maybe more like producers or stuff like that, you know. Um, I think, but, like, 
definitely an ASAP Rocky feature. That would have been cold. That would have been cold. Like, Andre, also, like, I mean, if you look at his more recent work, like, the album that came out, like, four years ago, like, the only, the songs that really, like, stood out on that album, besides, like, maybe one, like, the one where it's, like, the black background and it's, he's kind of purple. Passion, Pain, and Demon Slam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The only songs that stood out were the songs with Travis and... Andre Pharrell. 2000 yeah. and Pharrell, yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's what's true. And, and like, who, like, uh, since then, like, like Kid Seed Ghost and like the big commercial stuff, singles he's released in like the past year have been with like, he's had like one single that wasn't on a future, like, he, he drops shit with like Travis and Eminem, like, yeah, yeah. Sure. And anyways, I think, I think we're getting the Scots next year, which is probably why there's no trap to Travis as well on this project because I think we're getting a full project between the two of them next year. Right, and um, he, he's dropping another solo album next year, right? Who, Travis? Or Cuddy? Uh, Cuddy. Cuddy. Um, I don't know. I think we might get another one from Cuddy. I think we'll definitely get the Scots, and I think we'll definitely get another Travis project as well. I think we'll be getting Utopia in twenty twenty. We better. We better. Yeah. 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 I need some new Trav, man. I mean, I want him to take his time and work on it. You know what I mean? If, if he takes no, another, me too. Me too. If he takes another two years and drops some fire, then I'm fine with that. <laughs> he's never um, gonna. He's never gonna. Top Birds in the Trap, though. Hot take. I think it's his worst album. That's my favorite. <laughs> what? That's a popular take, by the way. What? Yeah. That Birds is his worst album. I low key yeah. think I'd agree. <laughs> I, I mean, it's personally, like, Rodeo was too, like, boring and. Bruh. And <laughs> After World was too commercial. Come again? <laughs> trap is, like, right? Like, name one bad song on Birds in the Trap. I can name you a few. But anyway, not the topic. We'll talk about it another time. Let's move on. Another time. Um, I think a quick quick word on this album, Elsie's Baby Boy, the flashback track. I really enjoyed the um, House of the Rising Sun sample on that song. It's uh, a little fun fun sample right there. I don't know if you guys noticed it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's the, guitar, it's the guitar riff from House of the Rising Sun by the animals. Um, so I guess with all that being said, I think we're all mostly in agreement on this album. We're all in the, between the six to seven and a half range. Hey, this is Kalen from Colossal, and I just want to thank you guys again for tuning in, um, hearing us talk about Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon 3. And uh, once again, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And also, if you want to learn more, uh, check us out online, colossal.gq. That's K-O-L-O-S-A-L dot G-Q. And um, yeah, and click the link in the description for our Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Spotify, and much more. And we hope to see you guys again soon.